false alarm. Just some guy at the door with pizza leaflets. But that's how they're going to get me. Right, like I was saying, the thyroid gland. If you need more energy, the thyroid's giving it to you. If you're growing, either in height or muscles. If you're cold, pregnant or dieting. While the adrenals are the emergency fat loss first responders, the thyroid is the long-term fat loss like a hospital stay. And as ever more people are finding themselves with a weight problem or want to get a little leaner, they're dieting. These diets are providing the stimulus and giving the thyroid a workout. Now remember, to colonize the glands, we need overload, recovery, and building materials. Now overload is caloric deficit, and with that, you can pick your poison, because there are plenty to choose from. But remember the muscle and strength analogy. If you lift more than your body can handle, you're going to snap city. If you create more of a deficit than your thyroid can handle, you're going to go kal on your thyroid. Woo! Love that snap! Hence the suggestion of the three to 500 calorie deficit. Because the average person can produce enough T3 to break down that much fat in a day. But if you up the ante to eight to 1200 calorie deficit, the thyroid tries to up production but struggles. Then the adrenals have to kick in to help out. Now remember all that life stress going on. Chuck in a big caloric deficit and maybe a seasonal change and your adrenals are gonna buckle. Fat loss stalls, your belly starts expanding and you get a double chin. And you get the last two because the body lays down water, inflammation, and eventually fat to protect the gland. So that's how you can train like an athlete, diet like a model, and go in the opposite direction. In my experience, people provide the overload. I've not met many people over 25 who haven't attempted to reduce their calories at some point in their life. They struggle with keeping it manageable and sustainable. In the weights room, a 5-10% to 10 increase in intensity or volume is reasonable when trying to make gains. Any greater than that, and you could run into problems. For the thyroid, a 5-10% to 10 deficit of total calories is smart to start, and then build it up over the weeks. Quick math, if total calories is two or 3,000 calories, that's 100 to 200 calories, or 150 to 300 calories in the first week. But most diets immediately dive bomb to the 1400 calorie area. And if you've been on the fun buns before you start, that can be a 1500 calorie deficit on day one. And that's like going from the couch to trying to lift 200 kilos on the sole fact that you decided you want to get swole. Now the final and only arbiter of whether the deficit is too much is your body. When you start seeing symptoms like poor sleeping, constipation, feeling bloated, putting on weight, feeling tired, getting despondent, feeling emotional or irrational, that's the sign. Your body only talks in sign language, and these are the signs. You've overcooked the overload. You've gone from deficit to deficiency. And this happens because people favor linear progression over time with the thyroid. 2,000 calories, 1,800, 1,600, 1,400, 1,200, whoops, a meal. Long term, you need a better strategy. Undulating, cyclical, wave spiral, pyramidal. Now I'm just naming shapes. But something, anything, just not willy-nilly or nothing. So that's overload. Now let's look at recovery. The thyroid will struggle if you keep the body in a big caloric deficit long term. 10 to 50 calorie deficit is awesome and the key to long life, some say. But the medically recommended three to 500 calorie deficit for weight loss is big. Hence where you get visible weight loss. So don't even run that sort of deficit on yourself for prolonged periods. And any more than that, you either have to have an armor-plated thyroid, be taking supplements, or be doing it for a very short period of time. It's way too long when your hair starts falling out. You don't want to sport that Lex Luthor look. So you get recovery from removing the caloric deficit, and recovery can come in different time frames. Now some would say that micro recovery would be a type of intermittent fasting. And short term recovery is like brief eating, similar to a rest day from training. And long term recovery is like a well devised bulking and cutting program. Now these all provide an overload and recovery for the thyroid if done correctly, but most people don't do it correctly. They damage the thyroid by overcutting, fasting and denying for too long, and then they insufficiently eat and muscularly bulk afterwards. Or they use recovery as an excuse to load up on the junk food, 
That's not resting the thyroid. The toxins in the junk food damage the thyroid for the next cut. Now, I'm not saying don't have a tree. I'm just saying don't fool yourself into thinking that takeaways have some healing properties for your thyroid. And like the adrenals, recovering the thyroid is where people drop the ball because thyroid recovery means no caloric deficit. And no deficit means no weight loss. And no weight loss when dieting, well, what the fuck is this? And suddenly, the nicest person becomes like a third world sweatshop owner when it comes to the glands. They're all about the t-shirts and flogging the workers, or in this case, the fat loss and flogging the thyroid. So the question is, can you continue to get fat loss while not having much of a caloric deficit while still resting the thyroid? This is gonna bring the dietitians out with their pitchforks and comfortable shoes. If you eat a high fat diet, with balanced calories for expenditure and allow time to keto adapt, your body has an abundance of fuel which calms and heals your thyroid. This can work if your thyroid's sluggish, but not if it's kaput. If it's damaged, it is unlikely to work. Why? Because it can take six weeks or so to keto adapt. And if you've already compromised your adrenal and thyroid function, that can be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And doing a diet that's gonna stress the hell out of your glands so once they've adapted, they can heal, is just like saying, okay, he survived the first few rounds with Tyson, he gets tired, and he's all ours. Before I had Mike lost, he was 37 and 0. So that strategy didn't work out too well for 36 people. Now there are two different groups that talk about a sluggish thyroid and two different reasons for it. And one group kind of ruins it for the other. Group one are not exercising. They eat what they want when they want and have no way of knowing whether their thyroid is dysfunctional. It might be, but they don't know. They might have symptoms, fatigue, cold, weight gain, but these symptoms can equally be attributed to no exercise and eating rubbish. And group two are exercising, watching what they eat and not much is happening or it's going in reverse. And there's two ways to find out if your thyroid's sluggish. One. You can spend hundreds on tests and still not know definitively because those test centers love shifting the goalposts. Right, so we'll be doing a TSH and a T4, also do a T3, probably look at a reverse T3, um, an antithyroid peroxidase blood test and obviously ferritin as well. Are you paying by cash or credit card? Or two, you can do your own thyroid test and this is it. Get ready for it. When you manipulate your food intake, and you train, is there a change? That's the test, and you don't have to pay for it. And that's the test that the second group are doing. The idea that you can fail this most basic test, see the doctor, pay for tests, and be told everything's fine, proves the tests are meaningless. And if the lab or doctor can't analyze the test results to actually solve the problem, then the tests are useless. And using a test result to supersede symptoms you're seeing is using science to justify ignorance. If you train and control your diet, are you losing fat? If you're not, then you have a thyroid dysfunction and probably an adrenal dysfunction. So deal with that first. To recover the thyroid, you need to take away the stimulus i.e. calorie restriction, and rebuild the organ with protein and fat. And if that doesn't work, then your thyroid isn't sluggish, it's damaged. And then you need to look at specific micronutrients and supplements as well. Next up is the pancreas. Wait, did you hear that? Helicopters, they're trying to signal, they've got in an airstrike! <laughs>